got levels. We're good. We are good. All right, Pac Jones and ass. Uh, Pac Jones and ass. <laughs> I'm the ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun. Yeah, fun anecdote that you know that uh, other people might not. I legitimately like. I'd say 60% of the reason I got my broker's license <laughs> is because I'm technically an associate broker with Berkshire Hathaway, which means I made myself a nameplate that said DJ Jones Ass Broker. I enjoy your nameplate. Yeah. It's uh, Ass Broker. Pretty, I'm like more proud of that than I should be. It's <laughs> the dumbest joke ever, and it was a lot of work for a really stupid joke. But You'll yeah. always have the ass is insignation always, in my heart. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to flip the screen around so we can see. You don't... Uh, you don't have that hanging outside the door, though. It just sits on your desk, right? It sits on the desk. Or behind your think, desk. I mean, Berkshire is fancy and stuff, so I don't think they want me to make those kinds of jokes uh, in oh, in the office. I wonder if anybody would, would notice it. <laughs> I don't know. Would. Yeah, I know. We don't bring people to our office very often. We should do that. Yeah. Just start bringing it's, clients to the office. That's our safe place, though. It's, it's our, our safe place. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. Out there is our office for clients. Yeah. The, the world <laughs> is my office. Uh, all right, sweet. Question number one. What are we seeing in the market today? Uh, Joel. Uh, last few offers I've put in had multiple offers in them. The last one I wa- uh, helped a cl- buyer client win had an appraisal gap in it, which was the first one I had written since COVID. Since 2022. Yeah. So which appraisal gap, that means uh, if there's multiple offers and you know you can just say, hey, we're going to pay a, a million dollars for this $500,000 house. It doesn't carry any weight if... Uh, it only appraises for it's going to appraise for what it's going to appraise for and there's a condition making it so that you you don't have to pay more than it appraises for so an appraisal gap uh basically says to the seller hey even if this doesn't appraise we're willing to cover five thousand or ten thousand or however much money over the appraisal to make up for it and still go through with the purchase of the home anyway first one of those i had written um, and had to write in order to uh, help the buyers get the property. First one of those I've seen in a long time, uh, multiple offers, uh, yeah. uh, and buyers are still, they're coming out of the woodwork and having more buyer clients, and yet at the same time, I'm still seeing people say, we're going to hold off and see what the rates do as prices are starting to climb an inch up, and I'm afraid for those buyers that they're going to do the same thing that the ones four years ago we're doing that are kicking themselves in the ass. Yeah, it's interesting because rates haven't actually moved that much yet. Like they're lower, but they're not way, way lower. Like they were kind of hanging around six and three quarters. Now they're hanging around six and a half. The Fed met on Friday and they came out and said like, yep, we're going to cut rates in September. We don't know what that's going to be yet. It might be 25 basis basis points. It might be 50. Something important to remember, that doesn't actually directly affect the mortgage rate. Like mortgage rate isn't based off of the Fed prime rate. Mortgage rate is based off of the 10-year bond yield, which is affected by markets and the fed coming out with news on the bond rate affects the markets like it's all speculative basically so people heard the news that they're going to cut rates and the markets started getting better so uh so the 10-year bond yield the mortgage rates started moving down so kind of crazy um it'll be interesting if they do a 50 point cut because i think that will put a lot more downward pressure because basically mortgages are like with that speculation you'll see mortgage rates move down just on the news of the Fed cutting rates, not on the Fed actually cutting rates. So it's like highly emotional. Yeah, it's all market-based, basically. So um, My eyes glaze over a bit. When we, so I, I'm appreciative that uh, <laughs> DJ keeps up on this stuff because I, I was like... And it get, it's been explained to me, but I understand the emotional bit of it because I see it firsthand. You know, out there, it's like, yeah. wait, I'm looking at rates, and they're not looking like they're that much lower. But emotionally, everybody's well, they're starting to come down, and they were supposed to come down a lot more, a lot sooner. And if they're looking like that now, um, it's the the emotion is what yeah. will. Well, and I was talking with a lender actually about that. So they were saying it's been interesting because there's uh, there's a lender that came through an open house and we were just chatting. Um, But he said, yeah, it's super interesting. We're seeing a lot more applications, even though rates haven't changed that much, just because of the sentiment of buyers. Like people are starting to get used to the fact that the new normal is not going to be three or four percent. The new normal will probably be Lawrence Yoon, the uh, NAR economist estimated that the new normal will be somewhere in the six, like right around 6%. My, and this is pure speculation on my part, I'm guessing that long term will hang out in like the mid fives range uh, after, you know, everything has leveled out and been kind of normal for a couple years, at least hopefully. Uh, But yeah, it's like you said, I'm seeing way more buyers come out. I haven't hardly had any buyers for the last two years. Like my business 
for the eight years before that was typically about 70% buyer, uh, buyer based and 30% listings that's been flipped on its head and probably more like 80, 85% listings versus buyers over the last few years, because nobody wanted to give up their rate. Uh, nobody wants to buy a house when the rate is 8%. So yeah, in the last, like, I'd say three weeks, I've had more buyers reach out to me than in the last year combined. So Great. yeah, kind of awesome. crazy, but that, I mean, sentiment wise, like if you're thinking of buying, don't freaking wait. Cause that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Competition and, sucks if you're a buyer. Yeah. And I, like we always say, I don't ever like to tell people to try and time the market, but I've been sending text messages out to my friends who have kind of been like, maybe they looked at houses for a minute, then realized what the payment was going to be and said, you know what? We can't just yet. We'll see what the rates are like. Okay. Awesome. It's like, okay, you can't time it. However, <laughs> um, the price, when you go under contract, the price of the house is the price of the house. And, uh, however, when you go under contract, the rate may go down while you're under contract yeah. and you can lock in. If the rate does go down, you can lock in a lower rate. If, uh, you get a house under contract for $500,000 and the rate is currently sitting at six and a half. And while you're under contract, the rate drops to six and a quarter or whatever. And all of a sudden you're paying several hundred dollars less, um, you just got the closest thing to a good deal on a house yeah. because four weeks later, that house is going to be $20,000 more. Yeah, 100%. Now, on the flip side of what we're talking about here, I am in getting out with these buyers and looking at a lot more listings. I am seeing a bunch of listings that have been on the market for, you know, a, like 45 days, 60 days, 80 days, 90 days. Uh, here's the weird thing. If you price, buyers are so well educated right now that i mean everybody spends all day looking at zillow they know what's sold in the neighborhood it's not uncommon when i'm talking with buyers if they're very interested in like one specific neighborhood say they want the liberty wells neighborhood we're looking for multiple clients all around the valley sometimes in you know eagle mountain and sometimes in i was in tooele drove 158 miles the other day between an open house and american fork and then showings in tooele uh so we're watching the overall market my clients, if they're looking in just Liberty Wells, will know the houses in Liberty Wells better than I will because I just don't have the bandwidth to be checking that specific market that closely. So that was a long way to say, this fly is going to die. Um, that was a long way to say, buyers know if something is overpriced. So <laughs> if a house goes up that's even $10,000 over what it probably should be, it's going to sit there for a while because those buyers are all thinking, well, the house down the street went up for 10000 less, and it looked like the exact same. Why would I go see this one? Yeah. Also, I think perceptions on days on market is different than it used to be. Uh, for like, So if something's been up for 24 days and I'm out looking with clients, this how long has it been up? This one's been on for 24 days. The what's ones, wrong with it? Yeah, what's wrong with it? The ones that have been up for two days, like days on market, zero, one, two, three, four. If it's less than a week and they like it, if it hasn't gone under contract over the, if, if, if it's before the end of the weekend, they feel like we got to get an offer in by eight o'clock tonight because this one's going to, like you said, they know that like we have to get an offer in because they've missed out on the appropriately priced houses because they go fast. Yeah. So if they've been up for longer, oh, they've done a part. Why do you think they did a price reduction? It's like, oh, it was on the market for longer than 14 days. So they did a price reduction. They're seeing 40 days on market as a long time, where it's like 40 days on market is historically not no, a long no, time. Fine, no, the, when I first started, the prevailing wisdom was like, when you're talking to a listing, say, hey, expect it to take 90 days to sell your house. So that was just kind of the norm uh, in like 2014. But yeah, it's uh, that's not the norm anymore. I mean, our median days on market is significantly lower than that, and median is a whole different thing because like well-priced houses sell the first weekend or the first week. I think that's a good segue into uh, what do you think makes the difference between? Ooh, yeah. How much does oh, marketing matter? Yeah. Ooh. Did I segue too early, Jordan? No. No. <laughs> well, oh, for nine minutes and thirty seconds. I know. Fine. Yeah, we're gonna have to be. We're gonna have to be quick. Uh, so Jordan, you're newer, uh, yeah. you, but you're looking at listings, you're seeing all these different listings. What is jumping out about, like, what would you say makes something, makes a house jump out over another house when you're looking at the listings? I mean, first and foremost, I'm thinking of my buyer client, right? Yeah. So it's whatever 
whatever their high priority items are, whether it's a I don't know three car garage or yeah yeah my client right now they like really want to walk in basement walk in from the ground level yeah um I don't know besides that <laughs> yeah so marketing wise Joel uh I mean. We see a lot of listings. So like when you're looking for your clients, if you see a listing that has pictures that look like they were taken with a, a, oh, a with Motorola. Yeah. If you see a picture or a listing that looks like it was taken with a Motorola Razor no, flip for sure. phone versus professional photography, it's shocking how much more traffic those will get. Um, Everybody loves the Motorola pictures, obviously. Yeah, it's People, true. They, uh, that's where it the is. The Razor was and continues to be the coolest phone of all time. So like Indestructible, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, for sure. Like... Give me some sunset photos. Give me some like golden hour. Oh yeah, the right marketing. Actually, that matters a ton. Yeah, I, and plenty of pictures. I don't like if there's not enough pictures, my chances of gonna go check it out are a little less. Yeah, I actually I was talking with a buyer the other day about a house that I couldn't figure out what was going on with it because it's been on the market for like forty days. Seems like it should be a good value, and then we looked at the history of it, and it had been listed in May for like two hundred thousand dollars less. They had gotten the square footage wrong by 1,100 square feet, undersold it by 1,100 square feet, and it only had five pictures, and they were all cell phone pictures of the exterior. Like, oh, I wonder Damn. what happened with this. Like, no wonder it didn't sell. For it, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, and along with one of our other conversation topics about uh, what some of the similarities between music and real estate, um, when... When I'm buying a guitar or a bass or a piece of music gear, yes, I'm looking for something to serve a purpose. Like, okay, this guitar has humbuckers and it's going to sound good for this kind of thing or whatever. But, like, ultimately, like, the thing that really gets me excited is what does this guitar purchase say about me as a person? <laughs> you know, or what, what would I like people to think about me based on the fact that I'm playing this guitar or whatever it is? And I think the same thing happens with buyers when we're looking at houses. And we're saying, am I the kind of person that is going to enjoy a sunset view on my front porch and in my clean house that's obstructed from the worries and problems of my life because it's nice and clean and everything is new and I, I can just smell the clean carpet out of those pictures versus, um, okay, here's some flip phones and uh, flip phone pictures of what the corner of the living room Personal looks like. Personal favorite is when the agent catches themselves in the mirror. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like, <laughs> I don't see myself living in a house where the agent is also living there. So, yeah. you know, or where, you know, personalized things where it's like, I straight up had a uh, buyer client walk out of a house. It checked all the boxes. They walked in. Uh, we went straight... Usually we go to the kitchen, then we went straight to the basement. Raiders stuff everywhere. Goes nope, wrapping it up. <laughs> walk straight into the house because there was Raiders stuff everywhere. Sure. <laughs> Which might be a safe judgment. That's not a well, pro NFL fandom is not a protected class. Right, so. right. So, but uh, I mean, that's out by a Raiders house. Was he not a fan of Las Vegas or Oakland? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> but it was it was just an it was an immediate thing. The house, other than that, like on paper, checked all of the boxes. And it didn't get more than 60 seconds in the house. Yeah. Based on. Well, and that's, uh, I mean, the marketing is one thing. Like, you use the marketing to, to get people in the door. Right. Uh, and that's why, like, every listing we do, professional architectural photography, we do the 3D Matterport tours, which are super cool if you've never seen them. They're literal 3D doll houses of the house. So you can, like, click on it and walk through the house. I've sold two houses solely from that. One of them, the buyers never stepped foot in the house before they owned it. No so, way. Yeah, crazy. I mean, their agent went in and did inspections and they did all that, but they're in another state. They never once stepped foot in the house. And that's a really good opportunity to put your best foot forward because really it is, there, there's that emotional first that emotional first instinct when you walk into a house or you see how you do it and you go, oh, that, that, that feels like what I want. And if you have an opportunity to put your buyer client in the middle of your house, the cleanest it's ever been with the best photography and they've got those VR goggles oh, on, yeah. or there's doing through the, then well touring the home for an inspection or whatever, they're just making sure at that point, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then once they get in the door, so doing all that, we also do like all the professional video, all that kind of stuff. It, any one of those things might not sell the house on its own, but it doesn't hurt the chances. And that's why we do all of those things, including like why we have bought, 
a couple houses worth of staging stuff that's out in the warehouse right now. For sure. Uh, we want that first impression to be the best impression so that they'll get in the door. But then once they get in the door, I found that most buyers decide if they're going to buy a house within the first, like, I would say 30 seconds yeah. to a minute in yep. the house. Wow. Yeah. They know pretty immediately, unless there's something super weird like a Raiders room, um, they know pretty immediately whether they want the house. So okay, it's. So what do you do when uh, the seller hasn't moved out? They're still they're still living there and they still have all their stuff. Maybe they have a lot of stuff. I'm know? gonna have like, a few of those coming up. Yeah, uh, girl. I usually say if you can if they can afford a pod or get everything in the garage, like live like live like a bachelor for a minute. You know, live like you're. Um, Live like yeah. you're in a hotel. Renting an Airbnb until you sell the place. Uh, yeah, or I'll, I've yeah. had a lot of clients, and it's really helpful, too, like how easy a house is to show, besides just how the quality of what it looks and smells and feels like inside, but how easy it is to get in. It's like if if it's got to take forever. I have clients that will, they will, they'll go stay somewhere else on the weekends while their house is uh, up for sale and it is a huge deal rather than having yeah. to go to them and say hey can somebody come to the house at two o'clock yep sure i think we can make that work oh got but another one get for the four dogs out and we have to clean yeah i got another one at four o'clock can that work oh oh and then i'm talking to the buyer agent hey actually can you guys do five? Oh, well they're actually leaving town we've got these other ones it's like oh well that house just Yes, yeah. not not well, I, I actually just had this conversation with a client the other day. Uh, we're going to be putting their listing up this week, and I said, "Yep, I'll plan on doing an open house over the weekend. Uh, we'll get it good to go." And she said, "Oh, are do are open houses useful? Like, what's the point of an open house? I've heard from other agents that open houses are useless. I'm like, no, open houses are great because there are people who don't want to. It's kind of funny how often I get the comment from from clients of mine. They're like, "Oh, I didn't want to bother you to go look at this house." Like I, that's literally my job. First of all, I'm happy Please to go look at houses. <laughs> yeah, but there, people are very considerate, and if there's an open house, they can just swing through. And we're not trying to like snipe other people's clients. We're not trying to steal anything. But it's a very efficient way to get a bunch of people through the house and minimize the amount of showing requests. Mm -hmm. So right. if and I, I do think there are times when they're more helpful than others. You know, sometimes if yeah. it's an open house and it's like. Uh, the top story of a condo complex and it's hard to get to and you've got to ring through three different doorbells to get them in and whatever. It's like you you are probably just going to get people from the complex maybe looking in who are curious Nosy about what neighbors. update. Yeah, you know, it's curious what about their the place updates. Like. Is it better than mine? Right. Yep. Which, I mean, and even then, that's not a bad thing because they've got friends that they might want to have as neighbors. So it's mm -hmm. not that's not a bad thing, but... Um, sorry, yeah. I fucking no, no, the, derailed uh, your... <laughs> So thing. the main criticism I've heard for, about open houses is from other agents where it's saying, oh, they're they're useless. They're just using it to try and find more buyers, which is accurate. Like we've used open houses to try and find buyers. But uh, when they're on my listing, like, yeah, I'm trying to find a buyer. That's the whole point. We want to find a buyer for this house. Yeah. A lot of times I feel like agents who say that they're a waste of time. They just, just don't want to do them. Yeah, they got better shit to do on their Saturday <laughs> afternoons, and they don't want to sit at a house and twiddle through. I'm so new. That's yeah. all I do? Yeah. That's yeah, great. Do, I just do the open houses. Dude, oh. Jordan's <laughs> a soldier. Right now. It's like the best way. It's like, uh, I mean, it's like Alan Iverson. You're talking about practice, yeah. except in the opposite way. You actually are practicing. Yep. So no, For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's I, I love open houses. I've built a significant portion of my business off of open houses specifically. So, yeah, I'm all about them. Sellers, do open houses. Boop. All right, what's up next? We got, I can't even, oh, it turned off. <laughs> We're just free balling at I this point. I know we have 10 minutes. Uh, okay, the settlement. So the NAR settlement took effect. We could talk for an hour on this, and uh, the fact of the matter is it's all so nebulous at this point. Nobody has definite answers yet. But on the street level, what does it mean to us? Uh, what changes have you seen? Um, for me, I'm excited. I just have written my first offers with the new Repsy, um, where it's a real estate purchase real contract. estate purchase contract. Where now it's out in the open what we're asking for as far as our commissions paid for by the seller to us as buyers agents. If we're a buyers agent, historically, I could see on a listing, and if it said 
an amount that they were willing to pay a buyer's agent that was less than what I have in the agreement with my buyer, if that amount was less, I just never said anything to my buyer and I just figured it out. My first priority is uh, to serve my buyer client and make sure that, um, and, and it's so stressful. I'm like, I'm not going to worry about the, if it becomes an issue, if the, uh, Anyway, there were a lot of times where I'm taking a commission hit and my buyer client was never the wiser. Yeah. And um, this is giving me as an agent an opportunity to show my buyer clients exactly what's happening and who's paying for what. And if, if I'm going to discount my services, it's sitting there in black and white, not just a line item on a closing document that they really have to look for to see if... Smart. Does that make sense? I know when I bought my house the first time, mm-hmm. I was that was far from my brain. I right. wasn't thinking about who was how people were getting paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, and so the funny part in Utah that I'm finding with this, and I've had a few people ask, like, "Oh, does this mean if I'm selling my house, I don't have to pay a buyer's agent anymore?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, it does mean that. However, you didn't have to pay a buyer's agent before, right? The that hasn't the fact changed. of the matter is, it's usually in your best interest to offer buyer's agent compensation if you want all the buyers to be coming by because buyers sign an agreement with their, this is all stuff we've, the settlement is largely stuff we've done in Utah for forever anyway. So we always had to have a buyer broker agreement signed in order to submit an offer for our buyers. The only difference now is we have to have it signed before we show them a single house. I just signed my first single property buyer broker agreement the other day for a new lead. Um, it was weird. I was gonna say, how'd it feel? It felt weird, but they were totally fine with it. I was like, ah, I legally have to have this to show you yeah. the house. Uh, but no the pushback. W- no, and I partially because I fully explained it. Like, listen, if you don't like me, there's actually a way in here that you could sign a buyer broker with somebody else and look at the house. Like, I'm not in the business of making people work with me that don't like me. Yeah. So I'm not trying to entrap anybody. That's how I've always been. I didn't usually make people sign buyer brokers until later on in the process when we knew that we were getting along. I'm really hoping that we don't see agents uh, use it as a tool to ensnare yeah. buyers. Well, the nice part is they can't now. Oh, okay. Um, so in the new buyer broker agreement, it basically gives room. There used to be a thing called procuring cause where if you were the agent that started an unbroken chain of events that led to a closing, you were owed the commission. So if I showed, if I got an internet lead from some rando, showed them the house, but they didn't want to use me. We didn't get along. Uh, I called them names. They called me ugly. Uh, if they didn't want to use me, they could talk to another agent, use them to make an offer on the house. But if I had that initial showing, I was owed a commission, which is horrible. It was a pain. Now, it very clearly says in the, in the agreements um, a clause, something to the effect of the, uh, if, I, if the client signs another buyer broker, this is like null and void. So oh, there's no more procuring cause. It, yeah, now they can sign an agreement with somebody else and work that way, which I'm totally fine with. A lot of agents are going to have a hard time with that because I've known of agents who did that. They'd say like, oh, well, I know we're not getting along, but you signed a six-month agreement with me, so you're using me. But it sounds so much better for the client. Yeah, that part I'm actually okay with. I just think it's annoying that we have to do it on the first show. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah I know it's our first date, but yeah. here's a prenup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the other part that we've always been doing in Utah, uh, the one thing I do like is in listing agreements now, it specifies who's getting paid what by the seller. So. Uh, going like back to too. why it, yeah, going back to why it's actually beneficial for sellers to offer a buyer broker. Like, if I even if I wasn't an agent, I would be offering a buyer broker because there are, say, a buyer signed a three percent agreement with their with their agent. That means if they buy a house that's not offering any compensation, they are potentially going to have to come out of pocket three percent. So, say you're buying a five hundred thousand dollar house and you want to put twenty percent down. That's a hundred thousand dollars, which is not a small amount. Or let's say you're a first-time home buyer and you want to put three percent down, so you're putting fifteen thousand dollars down. If you then have to pay your agent fee on top of that, and you're going to have to pay origination fees, title policy, all that kind of stuff, if you have to pay your agent on top of that, that's another fifteen thousand dollars, where that's been traditionally baked into the sales price. I think it's a, you could almost liken it to um, if you're looking at a house that has solar panels on it and let's say let's say the solar panels cost x percent of the house and they're not paid off when you sell the house and you say yes our house is for sale for this amount of money the 
Solar panels, though, however, we still owe 15000 on the solar panels, so you're going to have to go ahead and pay that when you buy the house. It's like, yeah. it's just good marketing to Say, figure out and pay the solar panels off before yeah. you put your home Raise up your for price sale. Raise by $10,000. Right. And uh, $15,000. Same, same thing to be said for uh, buyers' yeah. agent fees. Yeah. So long story short, the settlement uh, creates a lot of extra paperwork. There's a lot of uncertainty around it right now. And it kind of feels silly in Utah because it's things that we were largely doing before other states didn't have the same requirements. So I like the transparency it brings to it. It'll be nice in a few months when we've hammered out the details and don't have to have all this guesswork on like how exactly things are going to work. So that's that. Next topic. <laughs> Seasonal market. We're coming into fall. Yeah, so, good time to move. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, who doesn't like moving when there's snow on the ground? Yeah. Uh, so, Joel, tell me about seasonal markets in Utah. Man, I feel like... Uh, so, seasonal market. The ones that I've... I was, I was told about different seasonal markets in Utah when I joined the force. And they it was at the very beginning of COVID, and all rules went out the window. And it's like, seasonal <laughs> markets, shmishamol, shmarket. Sh um, but the one that, man, July has been kind of historically tough July's always weird in utah and it's funny like i mean we'll see uh, it'll come in pockets people will say oh yeah between thanksgiving and christmas that's really tough and it's like yes however uh, there's always been exceptions you know if you can if you're a seller and you can if it's going to be the difference between making this decision and having having your house up in uh, April, May, June and get it in before July, yeah, full court press, make that happen. Um, however, if it's, you know, September, however, if it's September, uh, October, <laughs> and you want to, uh, you're going, oh, do I need to wait till April to sell my house? Because I've heard that's the best time to sell my house. I think that's a bit of a I think that's a yeah. bit of a long shot. It depends on your situation. If yeah. you want to sell now, sell now. Uh, so like those holiday seasons, it's weird because there's going to be a lot less buyers out because people don't want to move between the major holidays. Yeah. But the buyers that are out are going to be the ones that are dedicated, and there will be less competition out yeah, there. True. Yes, and they're going to be they're going to want to work on stiffed up. Like we want to move in by Thanksgiving. We yeah. want to move in by Christmas. We want to move in by New Year. We want to move in by. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going out throwing uh, pagan religious holidays out there as if everybody celebrates those but um there's to be in by austere uh, yes yeah. <laughs> but yeah the like you said the ones that are the buyers that are looking in those times they they want to move yeah yeah and then if you look at the the traditional like the trends in utah so look at the sales per quarter graph it goes winter is the lowest then spring is usually the spring and summer are super high and fall kind of drops down. It follows a very consistent trend, except for in those super weird years. Yeah. Even then, it followed the trend where the most sales are happening in the spring and fall. So if you can wait until spring to list, it's usually better just because buyers are in a better mood when they don't have to trudge through snow mm -hmm. and drive on icy roads to get to your house. But uh, yeah. That being said, you're probably not going to get like an extra 10% uh, out of your house by waiting. Um, you just probably go a little quicker yeah go there will be more buyers out yeah. so and as a buyer i think go during monsoon season you could tell if the roof's leaking yeah. oh yeah brilliant these last few weeks yeah this is the time <laughs> see if the roof is still on the house after some of the That's wind right. yeah all right last up because we got two minutes similarities with music and real estate we're all musicians uh some of us better musicians than others you two better than me uh <laughs> but uh what are some of the similarities you guys have seen between music and real estate Jordan, start. i mean in the business yeah or just it's, overall. I mean, it seems like as a new realtor, uh, it's very similar to finding clients to record. It's like it's all word of mouth. Yeah. It's all it's feast it's or famine. It's all relationship based. It is all feast or famine. Uh, if there's any relationship between the market and people coming into the studio, July was dead for me in the studio. And if, if it was dead for the sellers and the buyers as well. It, it is every year. Every summer we all go, what is happening? And July. it's because there are two major two major holidays in July and people are getting all that in before they go back to school. This makes sense. Yeah. Joel. Uh, I think uh, that it really is, in both, it really is just about people. Um, music, people are, they have something they want or an idea they want to convey or whatever. And with real estate, um, people have a life they want to live and they want life to look a certain way. And you want to spend time with the people you get along with that you think have the best 
have your best interests in mind and that you can trust. And trust is huge in the recording studio. And I think trust is huge in real estate as well. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think the thing I would say is the biggest parallel is attention to detail matters. Like music, if it can make a huge difference if you a detail can be if you're a quarter step flat, you will sound like hot garbage. Um, and you guys are good engineers, so you can fix that, thankfully, because I'm pretty sure I've needed that in some of our songs. Uh, but yeah, me too, me too. attention to detail matters. And things like in in music, you can play like one string can be flat. And that's such a small part of the total mix, but it can screw the whole thing up. In real estate, if you miss one small detail on a part of the contract, it can really screw things up. So yeah, it's all about paying attention to detail and making sure that you're doing it right and being thorough. So we got the that. team that's uh, attention to detail people. Yes. Yeah, yes. go team. Yeah. And on that, we're out of time. So right. thanks, everybody. That was fun. Uh, let us know if you have questions. Let us know if you, I don't know, let us know if you want Joel to take his shirt off. Let us <laughs> add some spice. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.